The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the most important horror films of all time. Not only did it inspire a half dozen sequels and reboot films, it was also a completely new addition to the horror genre that opened the floodgates of gore. Leatherface is still one of the most unsettling villains in movie history, and there's a rich history behind the first movie in the series that even the most diehard of Leatherface fans might be surprised to learn. Keep watching to learn the untold truth of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Under the Boardwalk when director Toby Hooper and writer Kim Henkel decided to team up again after their previous collaboration on the low-budget indie movie Eggshells, they knew they wanted to do something in the horror milieu. But what? At first, the pair considered a more sinister version of the already dark Hansel and Gretel fable, but then they looked to another type of fairy tale narrative. Trolls. A five, six, seven, eight. Well, not those trolls, more like these trolls. If they'd gone with their original thinking, the movie would have been called Head Cheese and followed a group of trolls living under a bridge. It might have been about as successful as their experimental eggshells if they hadn't come up with a more mainstream concept. Luckily, they stumbled upon a killer new idea. Ed Gein and then some. Any Texas Chainsaw fan worth his or her salt knows that Leatherface was in large part inspired by real-life killer Ed Gein. But he wasn't the only skin-loving psychopath to lend some creepy realism to the story. Hooper told Texas Monthly that the idea for Leatherface was actually derived from a story his doctor once told about a med school prank where he cut off a corpse's face. When he was in pre-med school, he skinned a cadaver's face and cured, you know, dried it out and wore it for a masked Halloween party. So, okay, that's cool. That's not all. Hooper also looked to a Texan teen serial murderer named Elmer Wayne Henley. Hooper explained, He kind of puffed out his chest and said, I did these crimes and I'm going to stand up and take it like a man. Well, that struck me as interesting that he had this conventional morality at that point. He wanted it known that now that he was caught, he would do the right thing. So this kind of moral schizophrenia is something I tried to build into the characters. Chainspiration As for the movie's mood, Hooper and Hankel had to look no further than the news to get a read on the cultural unrest that existed at the end of the Vietnam War. Meanwhile, the idea to implement a chainsaw as the weapon of choice came from a particularly terrible holiday shopping trip to a local Montgomery Wards. I found myself in front of a chainsaw display in the hardware department, and, and I, this, that's where the idea came from. I thought, well, if I pick this damn thing up and start it, you know, they'll part like, a, like the Red Sea. Surprise! Hooper kept his Leatherface actor Gunnar Henson quarantined from the rest of the cast until it was time for him to elicit some real scares. So when he finally popped onto the scene, he gave his co-stars quite a fright. It was just one of the many methods Hooper would use to evoke honest tension from his stars. He admitted in an interview to using a similar tactic when it came to the wheelchair-bound character Franklin, saying, We wouldn't let Franklin have lunch with the other actors, and we wouldn't let him bathe. Beef. It's not what's for dinner. One of the central themes of the first Texas Chainsaw movie was the way that the victims were butchered in such similar ways to animals. Director Toby Hooper, who himself had become a vegetarian due to the perceived cruelty of the meat industry, actually used the slaughterhouse he'd passed by on regular drives as a set for the film because it played such a heavy part in the philosophical undertones of the pick. He explained in an interview, I had an experience in a restaurant one time where there was a huge trolley with beef being carved up and I just transposed different images onto it. Like, what if there was a nice little cow there with a bow tie and knife carving up humans? It always disturbed me. It became part of the psychology of the film. He later admitted that he thought that the heart of the film was about meat. 
Even though the character's cannibalism isn't directly confirmed in the original, others agreed. In fact, the people for the ethical treatment of animals, better known as PETA, has given the film the nod for being among the most pro-veg flicks of all time, while fellow genre auteur Guillermo del Toro went meat-free for a while as a result of the movie. From that moment until four years later, I didn't eat any meat. Chances seem pretty good del Toro didn't take the time to see Sausage Party, huh? Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know about your favorite Texas Chainsaw moment.